How's it going? Eddie Gray back at it again, reading the Logic user guide. Let's continue on with the score editor. Add dynamic marks, slurs, and crescendi to a score. Dynamic marks indicate the dynamic level at which a performer should play a musical phrase or section. You can add dynamic marks such as P for piano, double F for fortissimo, SFZ for sforzando. Dynamic marks are visual symbols only and don't affect the volume of notes during playback. You can add slurs to indicate notes that should be played legato and add dynamic crescendo and decrescendo symbols, sometimes called hairpins. Automatic slurs can cover a selected group of notes and adjust when the notes are copied, moved, or transposed. Using key commands, you can quickly add and edit automatic slurs for an entire phrase, part, or score. After adding these symbols, you can adjust their lengths to indicate which notes they apply to. These symbols are visual symbols only and have no effect on playback. I like that they said that twice. The part box is available when show advanced tools is selected in Logic Pro. All right, so make sure that inside of your preferences, everything is on, including the score feature here. All right, so we have a region in focus. The score editor selected. We now see the part box over here in the inspector. And if you click on a couple of these items here, you'll start to find all of the markings. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over. Let's say we had string players and we wanted to tell them to play this with a certain amount of dynamics. That would be that visual component there. Uh, again, if you wanted to have them play a certain way, you can add markings from this menu here. So here's S, F, Z, Sforzando. So maybe they get more intense after bar 10. Automatic slurs are also available. You can add an edit automatic slurs, which automatically adjust to cover a selected group of contiguous notes. Automatic slurs adjust when notes are copied, moved, or transposed. They do not overlap with notes, accidentals, sharps, flats, or most score symbols. Click the slurs and the crescendi button in the part box to show slurs, crescendo, and other symbols. So I didn't know that these buttons had names, slurs, and crescendi. Pretty sure it's that one. All right, here's the automatic slur on the left-hand side, right there. Okay, and so then I just click, drag it over, and there you go. You can start seeing it's doing its magic here. Again, this is just a visual component. All right, so I'll select the, the uh, notes that I want to slur. So let's say maybe these couple of notes here. And then again, just drag this over and you've created an automatic slur. You can do that manually as well, but that's just giving you one workflow. You can also add an automatic slur when no note is selected by selecting an automatic slur in the part box, making a long click with the pencil tool near a note and then dragging out the automatic slur. So this would be doing it manually. Let's go 782. Add automatic slurs using a key command. So there's actually a key command for this. Let me go ahead and find it. Create auto. Hmm. I don't see it. It looks like this has been changed. I'm assuming it's going to be one of these, but I'm not exactly sure. So I will take this, might need to be updated. Okay, to edit, you would drag the start or end point to edit the curve, drag one or more of the inner handles, and then to convert an automatic slur to a manual slur, you would control click it and then choose convert to manual slur. 
So in the case of, I think I had one here somewhere. Yeah, this one. I can adjust this, right? Move it this way, move it that way. We can convert to manual slur. And then just kind of play with it as you wish. All right, so manually, the same thing would apply. We would just grab these. Of course, automatic slurs are useful, but using a manual slur may be preferable in situations where independent placement or more complex curves are needed. They are also necessary in cases where you need an enclosing slur above note groups with one or more automatic slurs. Um, yeah, so you would do the same exact thing. Let's, let's try using the pencil tool to select manual slur, then uh, click with the pencil tool at the place where you want. Okay, so like for example, I will select this one, right? And then my secondary tool is the pencil tool. So then I will just start drawing it in. So I'll just go from here to there. And there you go. There is a manual slur. These are slurs and not ties. Let's distinguish among those two. Ties cannot be inserted manually but are displayed automatically if a midi notes length requires it so there's a difference between slurs and ties so for example you can see the performance here of the strings uh it's just going to play and then drop out listen then drop out okay well if those were actually joined command j and then I hit, uh, let's see, I believe it's good. Okay, so then now when we look at the score, you can see that it has created not a slur, but a tie. That's because ties cannot be inserted manually. It's a part of the performance. All right. We showed you also how to use a crescendo or decrescendo. It's all the same thing. It's just visual. To edit these, you select the item and then drag from the center. I think I have one set up here. So you click it, make sure it's in key focus, and then you start to play with its various handles here. All right, 784. Let's see, anything else to add? Okay, we're adding accents and other symbols to notes in a score. The part box includes symbols such as accents, fermatas, phrasing marks, bow markings, and others that apply to a single note over which the symbol appears. Trills are in a separate section. All right, so if we want to add, we can do one of the following. Add a symbol to a single note. So we would drag a symbol from the part box onto the note. We can just freely place it by a holding option and then dragging the symbol from the part box to the position you want to place it. So this is not contingent on it being on a note. For example, if I grab, let's say this mark right here, and I'm holding option, I don't have to have it on top of a note, it could be somewhere in between, okay? Whereas if I'm not holding option, I quite literally have to be on a note to be able to utilize that. To add symbols to multiple notes, we would then drag a symbol from the part box onto the selected note. So you would create, let's say, a selection between this passage here, and I will grab, let's see, this one here. And you can see how it's all connected there and then add symbols to one or more notes, selecting a symbol in the part box, then click one or more of the notes using the pencil tool. So that's a nice little workflow. Let's say we were gonna select this one here, and I selected that and that. Those markings follow suit. All right, if we wanna add trills, more of the same, right? Go into trills, drag a symbol, All right, so one of the things about never 
opening up the score editor. So again, the workflow is the same. Just click, drag that over, and that should get you across. All right, we're going to add sustain pedal to a score. Piano parts can display sustain pedal down and up markings in the score editor. When you open a MIDI region with sustain data, this is MIDI CC64, sustain pedal on and off. In the score editor, the sustain data appears as pedal markings. Add pedal markings to the score makes it the affected note sustain. That is the MIDI playback is affected, right? Unlike the other markers, these pedal markings are the only score symbols apart from the notes that directly represent MIDI events. Okay, so that's important language there, so we're going to highlight that. Logic Pro intelligently inserts the on pedal down or off pedal up version of the symbol, depending on the last preceding pedal symbol on the staff. Sustain off always follows a sustain on and vice versa. Choose ped from the insert pop-up menu in the score editor, then command click at the point where you want to add the pedal down symbol and then drag to the point where you want to add the pedal up symbol. All right, so we'll click on ped and then it said, All right, so then let's say I hold command and draw that in there. Okay, and then if I draw in the other part, you can see that it's basically sustaining on, off, on, and off. All right, so let's say you want to add a couple chords to the mix. You would grab the diagram right here, just drag it into the session. I'm going to do this in another view. So again, Look for the chords right there. Grab that, just drag it on in, and then you get to pick a chord from the chord grid library. Let's read a little bit more about this now. So once you drag a chord, that's going to pop up. You can also choose a chord grid symbol in the part box and then click the position in the score with the pencil tool. So you can see that this is selected. And if I command click, let's say at bar five, you can see that now this menu comes up again. How many chords are there in here? 4,620. All right. Um, the chord, okay, all this is good. The chord grid is selected. You can reposition it horizontally vertically let's see if this is true so just pretend i'm putting that chord in here i want to oh wait why did it just went away for some reason let me put this chord i'll hit okay all right let me change from the text tool to the pointer and yes you can in fact move this around very cool I will say for somebody that's new to the score editor, it's very helpful when we have these diagrams so we can find the particular marking or articulation. So here it says to add a first or second ending symbol. So you would look for that again in the part box. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, it's right here. And then you would just click bring that over let's say let's say this was one variation of an end and then the you know the next time around you want to play i don't know this variation uh, so then you would put the one here and the two here for example good all right we want to add a page and line break to a score so under customize we're going to hit that little symbol i really like that because i'm going straight to the source so again i will click on that and looks like we have the ability to break a page. Cool. They cannot be moved automatically. So just beware before you insert it because you cannot move these after the fact. Let me see if this is true. Yep, you cannot move it. Can I command Z? Yes, you can. All right, guys. Hey, thank you very much for another edition.
Thank you for your patience. This specifically is for people that do not know how to use this, such as myself, and we're just doing our best to navigate the waters. I'm checking the user guide to make sure that newbies, such as myself, when it comes to the score editor, can navigate the landscape. So far, so good. And yet, I do think that there are improvements that can be made in the future, and I'm looking forward to being a part of those. Thank you very much for your time. I will see you tomorrow where we will continue on our ongoing education and conversation in Logic Pro. Thank you very much. Have a great day.